In this video, I'm going to break down how you can get ahead of 99% of computer science students in 2025. My name is Amon. I'm a software engineer and career coach who's worked at companies like Amazon and Shopify. And in college, I was able to land six software engineering internship offers and multiple six-figure new grad offers, putting me in the top 1% of all computer science students. And I was able to do all of that while keeping up with my classes, social life, fitness, and this YouTube channel. Now, before we break down how you can actually do the exact same thing and get ahead of 99% of computer science students in 2025, you need to understand why most people struggle to take advantage of this degree. Let's take a step back here. Why do most people, including you, even study computer science in the first place? Well, the vast majority of people enroll in this degree to get a high paying job in tech. I know, super obvious, but stick with me here. If everyone, including you, is studying computer science mainly to get a job, then why do the majority of computer science students spend most of their time in college now looking for a job. I mean, you're paying tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars in tuition to go to school and get a degree, all so you eventually can get a job in tech. But in reality, most people spend over 90% of their time at university on their classes, not on getting real experience. Why is that? Sure, there are some computer science students who are studying to become a research scientist or pursue a PhD, and those people definitely should focus on their classes, but that's incredibly rare. In fact, according to reports from the National Science Foundation and National Student Clearinghouse, of the 112,720 computer science degrees awarded in the US in 2023, only 2,390 were PhDs. That's a little over 2%. That means that the other 98% are studying computer science to get a job in tech. So what does this mean for you? Well, unless you're one of those 2% ultra nerds out there who are just in it to become a research scientist, you should not be focusing on your grades or GPA and instead put almost all of your time and effort into getting real world work experience. But why do most computer science students not do this? Why are you still thinking about your grades when you're doing this to get a job? Well, it's probably because of your parents. But Amon, my parents told me that grades are all that matter. That's what they did in college and they got a job no problem. They also paid for college working at the convenience store and were able to buy a house at 21. I'm about to give you a brutal truth. I've coached hundreds of computer science students into getting jobs in tech, and my team has spoken to almost a thousand aspiring engineers, just like you with your exact same goal. And many of them actually bring their parents to our call because, you know, it's a family decision to work with a program like us. I want everyone to be involved. Now, on that call, I've heard parents tell their kids, right after I explained to them why getting a software engineering internship is so important, their parents straight up disagree and say, you don't need an internship as long as you get good grades. I didn't do one and got a job just fine 30 years ago. It makes my blood boil when I hear this. It's the most ridiculous argument I've ever heard in my entire life. When I watch some parent tell their kid to just do well in school and you'll be fine, it makes me want to reach through the Zoom screen and strangle them. Why? Because there are so many people out there who got good grades in school and are completely lost, jobless, and struggling. And on the other hand, I personally know engineers who got a 3.2, 3.1, even a 2.9 GPA who are at companies like Microsoft. In fact, according to Standout CV, a career services company based in London, 66.4% of students who have done at least one internship in school end up securing a full-time job after graduation. And their salary is roughly $15,000 higher than students who didn't do an internship. That's how important internships are. And in today's job market, with layoffs, AI, and everything else that's happening, how do you have the audacity to tell your kid, don't worry about an internship. Focus on your grades and, you know, you'll figure it out eventually. Unbelievably ridiculous. GPA and grades do not matter. Now, of course, you should still get your computer science degree because it's helpful for networking and referrals. And it's also good to learn data structures and algorithms in a structured environment like university. But the actual grades themselves, that beautiful number in your transcript, completely useless. It's absurd to think that grades matter over your real life work experience, like getting a software engineering internship. And look, I get it. People have the temptation to focus on their grades because there are immediate consequences if you don't. If you skip class, fail a bunch of exams, and flunk out of your degree, someone is going to come after you. But on the other hand, if you don't get a software engineering internship, no one's going to say anything. Even if you graduate without one, you could probably just explain it away by saying, oh, well, the market's tough, so I didn't do one. And pretty much everyone buys it. Everyone's like, yeah, that just makes sense. This is very different 
from the reckoning waiting for you if you start to fail out of all of your classes, which is why most people tend to focus solely on their grades and underplay the software engineering internship acquisition process. Now, let's be clear. I'm not saying skip all your classes and fail. That would be stupid and a colossal waste of money. But unless you're a PhD student, shoot for at least a 3.5 and prioritize getting real world experience. Now, if you look at your weekly schedule, you should be spending 50 to 75% of your time every single week. That's 20 to 30 hours grinding to get an internship or a full-time job. Then maybe spend 10 to 20 hours a week just to get by in your classes. I would rather you do five to 10 software engineering internships and graduate with a 2.9 GPA than get a 3.9 with no work experience. And in this job market, universities are coming down hard on this reality. Let me give you an example of this. One of my best friends graduated from Princeton, one of the best schools in the country, and he straight up told me, Aban, I have so many friends from Princeton and Harvard who literally cannot find a job. Why? Because they spent way too much time on their degree and didn't spend any time on the job acquisition process itself. I could list off a hundred more examples of this, but the fact is you must stop caring about your grades. If you want to get ahead of 99% of computer science students, you must start prioritizing real world work experience over school. All right, so you've undone the decades of do well in school brainwashing. Now what's next? Well, if you want to be in the top 1% of computer science students, you can't act like the 99%. Stick with me here. What does the 99% do? Well, the 99% goes to college to have a good time. They care about the college experience, so they join a frat and party all the time. That's because they deeply prioritize their social life. Now, what are they not doing? They're not sleeping on time. They're definitely not grinding leak code and focusing on getting internships. And instead, they're wasting their time getting drunk and using drugs. Yes, college is stressful, I get it. And a lot of the time, people can only deal with that by drinking heavily in college to cope. But why would you squander your time in university by drinking and using drugs? Makes no sense. Now, sure, I can easily say this because I never started drinking alcohol, but I think the honest truth is that most people drink because they can't deal with the stress of normal life. They have social anxiety, so they drink to actually allow themselves to have fun at a social event, right? And they cope thinking, oh, everyone else is doing it. It's not going to kill me. It's fine if I drink while I'm young. Well, this is the time that matters. And if you actually want to get ahead of 99% of people, you can't behave like the bottom 99%, which is drink every single weekend. Now, this is going to ruffle some feathers, but the same goes for drugs like marijuana and even stimulants like Adderall. If you're getting high every day, you're definitely not going to be able to solve lead code mediums or hards. There's no chance, right? Imagine smoking weed and then doing an online assessment. Terrifying, just absolutely horrible. But there are a lot of people, especially nowadays, who think that stimulants like Adderall and Modafinil don't count. And frankly, a lot of people who perceive that they have ADHD don't. They have a terrible lifestyle, so you think that you have a psychological disorder, when in reality, it's because of your terrible sleep, nutrition, and exercise habits creating that state of being. Because of all of that, they're unable to focus. So you start taking stimulants. Maybe they're prescribed for you, maybe they're not. Maybe you just borrow them from a friend, and now you're hooked. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but this is unbelievably bad for you. A JAMA Psychiatry study from 2025 found that longer cumulative ADHD medication use was associated with hypertension and increased arterial disease. Higher doses also correlated with a 5.3 times increased risk of psychosis, particularly in ages 16 to 35, according to another study by McLean Hospital. Look, alcohol and drugs don't just give you fun in the moment. They steal fun from your future and bring it to right now. Because you wake up the next day feeling horrible, you slept terribly, you can't focus, and you just wasted two full days of productivity by drinking alcohol and using drugs. Now, this is going to be controversial, but in addition to alcohol and drugs, I also think you should cut out video games. Most people who are computer science students enjoy playing video games in their free time, and I get it. We're a bunch of guys out there that enjoy a challenge. But the thing about a video game is that it sucks up that drive to improve and get better at something and applies it to a practice that unfortunately makes no impact on the real world. RuneScape, World of Warcraft, Minecraft, Elden Ring, any of these games really. I don't care how good of a player you are, your success in those games does not translate to the quality of your life outside the game. But there are other areas that actually do improve everything when you get good at them. For example, I've been working out for years and it's honestly one of the greatest habits I ever picked up. My confidence has skyrocketed and I kind of see lifting as a video game. You're challenging yourself, you're tracking your calories, you're improving your lifts every single week, 
and you're building a physique you're proud of. It makes a huge difference. Another thing that's like a video game is leak code. I always tell people that leak code is one of the most important things you can do if you want to get ahead of 99% of computer science students. If you could hack your brain into treating leak code like a video game, that's a massive step towards getting a much higher paying software engineering internship and a better software engineering job in the future. So the lesson is simple. Cut out the destructive habits of the 99% and adopt the constructive habits of the top 1%. Now, the third thing you need to do to get ahead of 99% of computer science students is you must adopt the mindset of infinite evolution. Now, the core idea of this theory is that most people's basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Committing to this mindset means that deep down in your soul, you truly believe the following. One, most traits are skills that people accidentally or incidentally developed. Two, you can deliberately improve any any skill if you actually want to. And finally, three, given enough time, you can surpass almost anyone in anything, no matter what it is. So how do you actually apply this mindset? Well, the first thing you need to do is embrace the grind. Now, this will not be easy. There will be plenty of times when you'll want to quit. You'll see your friends going out, posting on Instagram, playing video games, and looking like they're having the time of their life. But if you're this far into the video, that doesn't matter to you, at least not as much as getting a $200,000 job out of college. You'll have plenty of time for all of that later in life. This is the time to focus. Every single person watching this video, I don't care who you are, if you're a student, bootcamp graduate, or career switcher, everything you do should be in pursuit of a software engineering internship, full-time software engineering job, or whatever your goal may be. You should be grinding lead code, you should be getting referrals, you should be applying all day long, and you shouldn't stop until you've accomplished your goal. It's like Alex Ramosi famously said, how to be productive. Just don't do anything besides the task you set out to complete. That's literally it. This probably sounds scary to some of you, but this is the kind of mindset you need to have to be successful in anything. Remember, everyone was a beginner at some point. I still remember back when I was a sophomore in college. I couldn't even reverse a linked list. I sat there staring at the problem for two, three hours and still couldn't do it. But I just kept at it. I kept following courses, studying data structures and algorithms, and practicing every single day. A year later, I tried that problem again and solved it in less than five minutes. In that moment, I was like... Wow, I can't believe I couldn't do this at all a year ago, and now it's so easy. Everything can be learned, and that includes how to be a top 1% computer science student and land your dream job. Now, I know this is a lot. Getting ahead of 99% of computer science students means in a room of 100, you're number one. So if you want me to literally sit on calls with you every single week for months, if you want our team of FANG recruiters and FANG engineers to work with you to get an internship and help you get ahead of the competition, check out the Software Engineering Accelerator. We've placed students into companies like Microsoft, Google, LinkedIn, Meta, and Capital One, just to name a few. So if you're interested in landing the internship of your dreams, check out the top link in the description and submit an application to join us. All right, but now you know what you should be spending your time doing, as in going for an internship and working on your physical fitness and health. You also know what you should not be doing, like spending too much time on your grades, partying and using drugs. And finally, you have the mindset you need to have a top 1% computer science student. The next thing you should do to get ahead of 99% of computer science students is to take advantage of the environment that is a university. Now, I know what you're thinking. Come on. Didn't you just tell me that university was useless and I should be focusing all of my time and effort on getting an internship? What are you talking about? Let me explain. Most people make the mistake where they think that universities are for the professors and for your classes. You sit there, you talk to the professors, you get good grades, and you think, that's what I'm here to do. But on a personal level, professors and classes are actually the worst part of your university. Let's be honest, a lot of professors are terrible at teaching. Many of these professors are people from other countries around the world who get hired to do research because they're brilliant minds in fields like computer science, mathematics, and STEM. But for some reason, they also have to teach. And look, I'm not being racist or anything. I'm a child of immigrants too. I'm brown, I'm not white. But I swear to God, most professors that teach half the time you can barely understand their accent. I know that sounds harsh and there are always exceptions, but if you're a teacher, the number one most important principle is to be understood, right? And in this day and age, I'm probably going to be canceled for saying that, but it's way more common than people think. So what is the useful part of university? The number one most useful part of a university is in the classes, professors, partying, or social network, 
it's the alumni network. For whatever reason, people completely downplay the value of having a strong alumni network. The thing is, when you're alumni of a certain school, you have a certain commonality. Like, even though you actually don't know each other, you feel this connection because of a powerful shared experience, like a kinship with a school. Again, I've personally worked with hundreds of computer science students, many of which we placed at FANG level companies. The first thing we have them do is network with their alumni. And that's because their alumni are willing to bend over backwards to get them a job. Trust me, it's something people deeply, deeply care about. Our students have probably a three to five times greater success rate when they ask alumni for help rather than random people at a company. For example, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. When someone from Wisconsin reaches out to me, I'm way more likely to give them that time of day than someone from a random school because we have that university connection. So how do you actually do this? Number one, you should be attending pretty much every single career fair you can. You should also be connecting with people on LinkedIn who are alumni of your school and then setting up coffee chats with them. Now, of course, you can do all of that yourself, but like I mentioned earlier, if you want our help, we've set up hundreds of coffee chats and gotten students thousands of referrals. Honestly, if you make a solid connection with an alum, they will literally coach you into getting the job. It might sound insane, but people genuinely want to help each other. This is partly due to a psychological concept called the reciprocity principle. Principle. This idea boils down to the fact that most people are reciprocal in nature. There's a good chance that the alum you reached out to help you to get a job did the exact same thing at some point. This makes them much more likely to help you because they got help the exact same way. Another psychological principle is called in-group bias, which is another facet of the alumni connection that gives you an advantage when networking. You went to the same school, dealt with the same crazy professors and classes, and you just had this inherent bond. Look, just try networking with other alumni from your school. I promise you'll see more results. Now, the final thing you can do to get ahead of 99% of computer science students is to compete in hackathons and aim to win. This probably feels random and like it doesn't belong, but stick with me. Hackathons are one of the greatest unlocks for someone who's in a university. Number one, hackathons are actually reserved primarily for university students. So once you leave that university bubble and graduate, it gets much harder to find good hackathons. Number two, companies sometimes come to hackathons and recruit. There are even career fairs at most hackathons. And number three, you will learn so much by actually having pressure to build something under time with a team of people. It's really unbelievable how much you learn in a hackathon. Let me give you an example of how hackathons helped one of the students we actually worked with named Ethan Santos. He joined our program last year and he's one of my favorite students. Not only did he put in the work, he's amazing at hackathons. He won a Roblox hackathon, a UCLA hackathon. He's probably won five plus hackathons. I know I sound like a broken record, but for real, this guy is unbelievable when it comes to hackathons and competing in those events. What's even crazier is that he actually had a Roblox fly him out to compete. And that was the event he won in New York City. You don't think he's going to get a referral at Roblox? You don't think that they're going to hire him? Of course they are. And Roblox pays engineers over $200,000. But even after hearing this example, so many people still downplay hackathons. Part of the reason they do is because I think a lot of people have a fundamental misunderstanding of hackathons in general. This is not some casual, let's all build something together kind of thing. No, no, no. If you're serious about programming and show up to a hackathon, you should be playing to win. Personally, I think that no matter where you are in your career, you should be doing minimum two hackathons per year if you want to become a top tier software engineer. All of this sounds great, but how do you actually do that? Well, here's my best advice for how to actually win hackathons. First, decide what you want to build and practice building it beforehand. People think this is cheating. Trust me, it's not. It's not like you're walking in with some carbon copy code you wrote one month ago and copying it or something. But every single hackathon winner I've seen has followed this exact strategy. They essentially build their entire app for three months beforehand, practice it, memorize it, understand the code through and through, and then they rebuild the whole thing from scratch the day they're walking into the hackathon. If you're still debugging and don't actually understand the app you're building, you're not going to win. No chance. You need to literally build your thing two or three months in advance, no exceptions. Second, you need to pick your team wisely. You need to make sure every single person on your team is committed, motivated, and has some kind of way to actually contribute to the hackathon. For example, the way that we structured our team, and I've competed in several hackathons, including one in Chicago that my team actually won, was we wanted to make sure each and every person had a specific specialty. During the Chicago hackathon, we made a video game that was a computer vision push-up game. So obviously one of our team members was a computer vision guy. I was a networking guy because originally we were doing networking between two computers so you could play remotely, and the final guy on our team was a design guy. Basically, you'll want to break down 
down what the main app is into three or four roles and then assign them accordingly. Just make sure to be very selective with who you pick. Third, you'll want to pick something that looks flashy. The winners for most hackathons aren't necessarily the best application, but are typically the ones that look the coolest. They need to have the best design and best flow and look like they're doing the most intense cool thing. Think libraries like Framer Motion and GSAP. You could literally write a million dollar research paper during a hackathon and no one would care because there will almost certainly be something with flashing lights, colors, and cool animations. I know it sounds strange, but if you want to win your hackathons, focus on how it looks rather than how it works. So those are five things you need to do if you want to get ahead of 99% of computer science students. If you want a step-by-step -step guide to land a software engineering internship this year, click on the video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.